This keyboard was doing something wackadoo. It was going like it happened in the Foursquare song. I play an E, 
okay? Really? And then I play, you know, one of my lovely, one of those chords, which I love. Some people think it sounds like the jumbly bonk a bonk but it's really, it's to me, it's a John Williams chord. It's got all the notes in it, but they all mean something different. <laughs> lovely. And I hit, so anyway, long story short, <laughs> I hit the E, and I hold on to A, B, and it would play a, a B flat with it. How bizarre. And then I thought, uh oh, so I took the keyboard, I was like banging it on the ground, shaking it, and turning it upside down. And I was trying to look up the, you know, Yamaha Corporation to give them a piece of my mind <laughs> just for some help. And then, um, you know, gosh, I don't want my keyboard to go bonky. And so uh, now the B flat won't sound at all. So, I mean, obviously it works, but and it doesn't do it there. Oh, there. If I hold the E down, the B flat does not work. It works when I do that, but not. So anyway, rather have it not work than work. <laughs> does that make any sense? Because it worked not <laughs> in four squares. You heard, you know, like a la 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 la. Ah! <laughs> the devil's interval. Anyway, um, we don't want that. Tritones. Um, it's in the it's in one of the violinists that anyone calls. It goes, we're on the island of unwanted intervals. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but anyway, that song is called "Time to Go," and um, not to go on and on, but it was inspired by um, a kid that I saw uh, interviewed on 2020, and he was 16 and he was locked up for life without parole, and you know. Uh, no doubt he did something horrendous, but he just seemed like a regular kid. And I remember him saying something like um, that he looked at people that are like 80 years old in line for their medication pills. And um, thinking, gosh, is that going to be me? And so, and I also saw, um, this is another thing that inspired this song, was um, some women that were in a writing group in prison and they also were locked up for life without parole and again seemed like regular people you'd meet at Kroger <laughs> meet anywhere and um, their lives are severely restricted and you know one lady even said gosh if I could just have not done what I did um, and they aren't what they did but they're condemned for that and that just bothers me I know people have you know their opinions on that I've got mine but I just feel it's like such a barbaric way to treat another human being. And it's also human beings treating each other that way. So, you know, somebody might say to me, well, if it happened to you or a family member or your pet, you know, how could you forgive them? So, I don't know. Um, it's a tough call. But I don't think locking somebody up is a solution and depriving them of love and all that. So, um, I think it needs to be rethought. It's just my opinion. So, call me a bleeding heart liberal. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that, but I think um, we all need to be careful not to condemn each other and not to play God. And um, I also feel that the people that are in prison that are guarded and kept in there, that the guards are just as much in prison as the prisoners. It's just that they're on the other side of that, of those bars. So um, I probably shouldn't say any of this, but um, I hope this song in some way, might put a seed in somebody's brain. Um, not that it could do much, but um, I think what we need is really a mass change of mind. And um, now that we're all kind of locked up in quarantine, <laughs> not to segue to that, but there's something to think about being deprived of your company um, and what that does to you. I'll end with this. When I got Bell's palsy, you can probably tell only half of my face kind of talks. It's much better now. I mean, um, some people fully recover. Most do. Um, some kind of recover, and some don't recover at all. And I'm one of the ones that kind of recovered. I'm still recovering. Continue every day to get a little molecule nano movement back. It's a little bit every day, something new. It's been, God, over 10 years. But um, I noticed when I first got it, and this was strange, you know, despite the sort of discomfort of not being able to move half your face and, you know, the other things that go with it, I couldn't say PFVB and I couldn't, you know, I was, I was drooling and, you know, I couldn't swish and swallow. Some, you know, I couldn't whistle. I can kind of do it now. Um, but the one thing I noticed that I'd never thought of was how, and this is, I didn't realize, is I would wa be walking down the street and somebody would be coming the other way 
and I look at them to smile. I can kind of do it now, but I, I couldn't before, and like you know, for about four months, totally not, no movement. And I would get a sneer or a growly look, or you know, like what's wrong with you, or and stuff like that. And it got to the point where I just stopped looking up, I stopped socializing, and just with you know, the sort of everyday sort of stranger hi, you know, hello. And you would be amazed how important that one little gesture you do all day long, every day, <laughs> and how it makes a difference. And um, so that, I thought, was the hardest part, is feeling um, isolated by that. And um, I, I also read, again, I'm going to finish up, that um, people are starting to wave at each other, <laughs> shout across the street, hey, how are you? <laughs> We're alive. Uh, you know, this is one of the consequences of social distancing, and um, it's probably going to continue to get. We're going to probably find new ways to reach out um, to prevent that feeling of complete isolation. So, um, I guess this is kind of one of them. Um, glad my keyboard works again. Better not screw up anymore. Don't be mad. <laughs> All my songs will be like, you know. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and I'll leave you with that note. <laughs>